Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. We are gonna be building my Viking tent. I am so excited to publish this video. This video is being posted after the fact. So I have already built this tent and have put it on my land and have stayed in it in the winter time. So I invite you to go watch those videos. It's been a ton of fun. It has been challenging at times too. So um, check out those videos. So if you are interested in building a Viking tent, this is the video for you. If you're interested in building an A-frame tent, this is the video for you. You don't have to build a Viking tent. You guys, I just call it Viking tent because it's just fun to say that, you know. I don't, uh, it's just fun. It's just, it's just been, a, it's been a fun adventure and I can be kind of creative at the same time because that's kind of who I am. Which reminds me, before we get started, I have my Viking um, shirt. So if you're interested in purchasing some of the, my shirts, I think I added the little Spirit Force logo here. This is all the, the design aspects um, of the tent and I'm trying to raise $500 for Wilderness on Wheels. I do have other designs too, so it doesn't have to be Viking. It can be a, uh, I have a paw print one, I have trees. So whatever it is that you like, there's a lot of different choices on there. So go check it out on spiritforestbear.com. Okay, enough of that. So what are we gonna do on these building my Viking tent videos? Again, I think it's gonna be fun. I think you're gonna like it. Um, I have a material list for you. If you have any questions regarding building what I did to build my Viking tent, let me know in the comments below. I read every comment and if you have a question mark, I try to always respond. So I'm gonna do a material list. I am going to show you me using some power tools and some hand tools in my garage. And then I have another video after that. Part two is going to be designing the, the Viking tent, like the actual design and the paint the job that I did. Um, I really like that video because, well, I'm an artist and that part of me, I was really excited to publish. And then I have part three, which is going to be my mom sewing the tent together. I have purchased canvas and my, uh, my mom came into town. She brought a bunch of sewing machines and, and we started to sew it together. I do have some tips if you want to watch that video if you're planning on sewing your own canvas um, as well. Um, I'll try to also link in the description if there's any material that I have purchased um, where you can get it if you want to use the same material. And then I have uh, my last video, which is part four, uh, which is going to be the putting up the tent on my deck so you can actually see it all put together. And I created a fun graphic because I'm a graphic artist too, but I only have so much time, you know, I have like my lunch hour and a little bit after the kids go to bed, <laughs> you know, to put it together. But I created a graphic to kind of explain a little bit more of how um, I'm putting the tent together. The tent is a 10 by 10. So it is really large. So to be able to video every part of everything was really tough. So what I did is I created this really fun graphic and you can see all the different parts of um, how I put it together and how it all works all in one screen. And that is the reason for the graphic. So I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna go back to my computer because I'm gonna do a voiceover and I'm gonna explain about the materials and such. So see you in just a little bit. I am now back at my computer and this is the cool graphic I made for you so that I could explain how it is that I built my Viking tent. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go over our material list. You need two two by eight 10 footers. This is the rafters for the doors. Uh, I printed a design, that's why I wanted them to be eight inches. Then you're gonna need seven two by four 10 footers. That is for the ground, the door in the back as well. Six one by eight dowels um, that are about 12 inches long. What I did is I ended up cutting them. I, I bought a large one and then I cut it. Then you'll need one and one eighth inch drill bit for your drill which obviously means you need a drill as well and then you'll need some wood glue that is going to glue the dowels into the 
the floorboards, which you're, I'm going to explain that later. You'll need some paint if you want to design. Um, and then to put it together, I used a mallet and paracord. Paracord just helps keep it all together. You're going to need a jigsaw power tool if you want to do dragon heads like I did. And then a, a hand saw. That's what I did to put together or to cut out the dowels. This is what we're going to be building today, which is the frame for my Viking tent. Now you can make it a Viking tent if you want, or you could just make an A-frame tent. Totally up to you, whichever you want to do. That I'm just making it more fun for me. But I think when I go to explain how to do it, we're going to have to do it in parts because I think it will make a lot more sense. What you see here is two two by fours. That is for the side of the tent. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some holes in the ends of them and then I'm going to stick some dowels through it. Then I cut holes in what the door area would be. So this is the front and the back of the tent right here. I cut holes in them and I'm going to stick the dowels through that. So now I have my base. I'm sorry if it doesn't, uh, my graphic isn't perfect, but you get the idea. You'll stick the dowels through the holes and you create kind of this box square. Let's work on the back part of the tent. This is the back door. Now I chose to do a door. You could have it not be a door. Some people have made comments um, on my videos regarding why I have two doors. The reason why I had two doors is because I wasn't sure how I was going to get in and out. And also I think I'm going to have this up also in spring when it might be a little bit warmer. It would be nice to be able to air out the tent. And that is the reason why I have the two doors. I cut the slant so it's easier. It can be right on the ground. I don't think that that's required but I felt it was just easier to know which part goes where it made it a lot cleaner when putting it together you'll need to do it with both sides of the doors so now when they join together you have one hole at the top and two holes at the bottom let's talk about the ridge pole which is the top part of the tent I again drilled some holes but I did it at the top of it you see now I put the dowels in there they're towards the top and the reason why I did that is because I wanted it to be secured in that way towards the top rather than the middle. I felt that if it was in the middle, it would rock a little bit more. Oh, the rafters are my favorite part. <laughs> my dragon heads. And again, you don't have to do a dragon head if you don't want to. You know, totally up to you. But this is what makes it a Viking tent to me is cutting out that dragon head, which you will see me do in um, video number two. Um, I did have to cut again a hole at the bottom and a hole at the top, and then I had to cut the bottom of this board so that when it was on the ground, it was flush, so I cut it at an angle. And I did the exact same thing, but on the other side. Now, I've seen Viking tents where the dragons look away from each other, and some Viking tents where the dragons look towards each other. Most of them I've seen, they look away from each other. I don't know if there's really that much of a difference. My preference was for them to look towards each other. It really doesn't matter, but that's, that's what I did. So basically I mirrored what I did on the other side. And then again, when they put them together, the holes match up and the ground, the, the bottom part of it is flush with the ground. This is what it looks like when it's all together. And of course, me being me, I have to put a design on it. I chose like a Celtic and Viking-ish type design, and I go over it in a lot more detail on the next video, so be sure to watch that video. But you could design it any way that you want, and that's what makes it fun, so this is very personal to me. When putting up the Viking tent, I noticed it was really wobbly. So what I did is I created a X pattern in with paracord. I'm guessing you could use anything you want. But as soon as I did that and I tightened it up, it wasn't as wobbly at all. So I really recommend to use paracord. And you'll see here that it's in an X pattern. So here we go, the final version of what it is that I'm building. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you some clips of me putting this together.
Well, I hope you liked all that. I put some Viking music in there. And I say Viking music, I really don't know what kind of music the Vikings were playing way back when. It was probably not that kind of music, but it was a lot of fun to put it together. And every video I do, I do kind of different music and such. So I hope you enjoy it. The next video that you're gonna watch is my design. I explain the design, I explain why um, I have an owl and why I have a bear. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So please join me in my journey of building my Viking tent. And this is part one of four. So see you in part two.